Welcome, brothers and sisters. Uh, first of all, we kindly request that you set your phones on uh, silent mode. And uh, today we are celebrating the third Sunday of Advent. Please join us in singing the entrance hymn. Sing a joyful song to the Lord, hallelujah. Let the heavens and earth rejoice, hallelujah, hallelujah. The heavens proclaim. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And with this. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate worthily the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. We were sent to hear the contrite of heart. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation, and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and is God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, 
Fear not, O Zion. Be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew in you his love. He will sing joyfully because of you as one sings at festivals. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God indeed is my Savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. With joy, you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. Cry out with joy and to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations, make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. Cry out with joy and to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Cry out with joy and gladness for among you is the great A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything. By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. to breathe. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. The crowds asked John the Baptist, What should we do? He said to them in reply, Whoever has two cloaks shall share with the person who has none, and whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what should we do? He answered them, Stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, And what is it that we should do? He told them, Do not practice extortion. Do not falsely accuse anyone. And be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them and say, in saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His window and fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor, and to gather the weed into the barn, but the shaft he will burn with unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways, he preached the good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. It's a priest that reminds us or invites us to look at this time of Advent, this time of preparation, with quite common terminology, especially computer terminology. And he talks about the time of Advent as a time of refreshing or rebooting, using the image that we usually refer to, those electronic devices, right? When our phones have so many apps that are open or when our phones are trying to do too many things at once, sometimes they freeze. Sometimes they don't want to work, right? And um, sometimes the computers as well, if we are putting too many things uh, uh, for the computer to do at once, sometimes they just freeze. They don't want to work. And usually one of the first Invitations that we have from the text is to shut it down, sometimes unplug it and plug it back in and get it going again, right? Refresh it, reboot it. It's interesting that I was, <laughs> I noticed this even in my washing machine. <laughs> I was doing laundry one time and as I was loading the, the clothes, I noticed that in the lid, it had instructions as to how to do it. Thanks be to God, I had somebody to teach me, and I didn't have to follow those, right? But it was curious of the section that it said troubleshooting. And in the troubleshooting, of course, he had a 1-800 number for customer service. But in it, it had a few items as to how to troubleshoot it before calling that number. It was interesting that the first one that said was, make sure that it's connected to electricity. I'm like, wow. But sometimes we need to disconnect and connect it again to make sure that things are working properly. And this priest reminds us that Advent serves as such time for us spiritually. We need to disconnect from all the busyness of our lives, from all the busyness of the world, to make sure that we reconnect with the world as beloved children of God not as one of the bunch that is just going through the world through motions or going through the world just doing things. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, and uh, we are reminded by not only the candle, the uh, Advent wreath candle, but also the vestments that we are doing things in a different way. And we are reminded that during this time of preparation, there's something different, especially today. As we heard in the readings, we are invited to rejoice, to always be mindful that God is close at hand. And as we're getting closer to Christmas, this third Sunday of Advent, we are reminded that 
the promise is close at hand. So we need to rejoice. Yes, it's a time of preparation and a time of waiting for that promise to be fulfilled, but there's reason for us to rejoice. And in these rose vestments, we are reminded of that joy. We are reminded that God is close at hand. Throughout history, God has made every effort to make sure that we as his humanity are refreshed, that we have that opportunity for us to detach from our world and be reconnected with God in our own lives. Advent is a time of preparation for that. Christ himself is the new beginning for our humanity. Is the refreshing essence that humanity needed to be restored to the dignity of being beloved children of God. And we have, especially in scriptures, story after story, how God throughout history has reached out to make sure that we are renewed, to make sure that we are refreshed, to make sure that we are connected in the right way with God. Today also, December 12th, we celebrate Our Lady of Guadalupe, another beautiful image that reminds us to be reconnected with God. In that image of Our Lady of Guadalupe was given to the indigenous community for the good of all, especially to a community that was oppressed, a community that was led to believe that they were not good enough, that they were not worth it, a community that was at times questioned if they had a soul or not. And in the dialogue of Our Lady Guadalupe and Juan Diego, we hear that when Juan Diego tells her, why are you sending me? They're not going to pay attention to me. I'm nothing in their eyes. And she said, you are something, my beloved son, my dear child. Go and deliver this message. And we hear how in that delivering of the message, they not only believe that he is a child of God, but of course they have the beautiful message of Our Lady of Guadalupe. That message was refreshing to the community that was oppressed to be reminded that God was with them, that what was going on around them was not the important thing, but God was always walking with them, and he was never going to leave their side. And of course, we have that promise also in the image of Our Lady of Guadalupe. I am, am I not here who I am, who am your mother? A reminder that she's always there to guide us in the right direction and to reconnect us with God so we can be renewed, so we can be refreshed and always remembering that we are God's beloved children. In the scripture passages that we have today, we hear in the gospel passage how People are coming to receive baptism from John the Baptist. And it is interesting that as they receive the baptism, they turn to him and they ask, what should we do? What do I need to do? But they ask not of, not as, as of uh, an obligation of something that John was imposing on them, but as a sign of newness of life, a refreshed way of life. They ask, what do I need to do? In other words, they are asking John the Baptist to continue showing the path for them. And of course, we hear how the scribes and even the soldiers come and ask for baptism. And as soon as they receive it, they ask for guidance to get newness of life. You and I, my brothers and sisters, are invited during this time of Advent to continue to ask that question. What do we need to do to make sure that we are walking the right path? Every day we have an opportunity for us to change something. There is always room for improvement. So it's important for us to continue to ask ourselves every day of our lives, what can be better today? What can I change in my life so I can be refreshed, so I can be reconnected with God, so I won't become one of the bunch, but I could be the living example of what a son or daughter of God needs to do. And we don't only ask that question from John the Baptist, but we also remember that we are baptized too. And in our baptism, we are giving our vocation, that invitation from God to fulfill a particular plan. There we ask, 
what should we do? Always being mindful that as beloved children of God, we have a particular task to enjoy life, to rejoice every day of our lives, and also to share that joy with others. And for that, I need to ask you for a favor. Can you please turn around and look at each other? What happened there? Huh? I just asked you to turn around and look at each other. I didn't ask you to giggle or to smile or to do anything else. Right? So what happened there? Hmm? Joy happened because you realize that you're not by yourself. There's others around you. The blessings of God are right next to you. That is a simple example of what we need to do every day of our lives, my brothers and sisters. Because sometimes we go through life like this. I am so excited. Yeah, well, show it. Let's show it to the world that we are excited. Let's show it to the world that we know that we are beloved children of God. That there's reason to rejoice. Yes, there are a lot of things that overwhelm us. There's a lot of things that saturate our lives and demand too many things from us. But we are reminded that we are God's beloved children. That he's always with us. Therefore, we need to ask ourselves every day, what must I do? At least turn around and look at each other. Mm -hmm. Yes, even though we are wearing masks, we can still share a little bit of joy with the other person. As we are looking at them, as we are acknowledging their presence, and as we realize that God continues to be present in our lives. In the second reading today, we heard St. Paul's letter in his letter to the Philippians. Rejoice. I shall say it again. Rejoice. This little exercise that we just did right now. It's a good reminder that we need to exercise that joy in our lives. I hope and pray, my brothers and sisters, that every day of our lives, we rejoice that God is close at hand. We rejoice that God continues to journey with us, that he wants to be part of our lives and we rejoice because yes there is uncertainty in the world but yes God is present with us all the way rejoice always I shall say it again rejoice Together let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of Catholic and Apostolic Church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's providential care, let us turn to Him and present the needs of our community. For our church, that we may always heed John the Baptist's call to share what we have with those who are in need and to repent of our sins as we joyfully proclaim the coming of the reign of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders may look beyond past divisions and rivalries and work together to bring justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. 
that the people of the Americas may find in Our Lady of Guadalupe a model of compassion and kindness to those who are unable to offer anything in material in return. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are suffering from loss at this time of year, that they may be comforted in their grief and find joy in God's love for us all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who live with chronic illness, that they, in the care they receive from family, friends, and caregivers, that may, they may know the love of our Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. In this Mass, we ask for the health of Jasmine Gomez. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. In this mask, we ask for the repose of the soul of Yolanda Tenorio and for the repose of the soul of Rafael Tenorio. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Together, let us pray to the Holy Spirit. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit fill, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send, send forth your, your spirit, spirit, O Lord, and they, they shall be created, created and you will renew the face of the earth. O Holy Spirit, love of the Father and of the Son, inspire always what I should think, what I should say, how I should say it, what I should keep silent, how I should act, what I should do, for the glory of God, the good of the souls, and my own sanctification. O Holy Spirit, grant me your gifts and your grace to serve you in my neighbor with all my heart and strength and to build a loving community of faith. Amen. Amen. Who to your tribes on Sinai? 
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and your sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplished for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design your form long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with the angels and the archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son of in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son of, O Son indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this mystery. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was sent, that he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you come. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, on the oblation of your church, in which we recognize a sacrificial victim, by whose death you will, you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he, make an, may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain the inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, San Juan Diego, 
with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and in charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Mark, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together, let us pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I give you peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold he who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am unworthy that you should enter the room, but only say the word of my soul.
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, O Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you today, as we celebrate Our Lady Guadalupe, to turn to her and continue to ask her to intercede for us, especially for the well-being of our parish community, and also in thanksgiving to God for sending her as a messenger in our midst. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is in upon you and remain forever. Amen. And remain forever. Amen. Rejoice always. Remember, our celebration is ended. We may go in peace. Thanks be to God.